This interview in the cafeteria at Apple took place in September of 2015. Everybody wanted to know the answer to this question. What is it about Apple? Why Apple? It's the people, Charlie. The, uh, you know, it's not, we, we do have a little bit of money and we've got uh, some IP and, and so forth and all this stuff is great. But what is the people that make Apple? It's the people and the culture. And the culture here uh, is this very unique blend of idealism that anything is possible, that we can be bold, uh, and a deep humanity. Uh, and every, everybody here wants to change the world, and we do that uh, through our products, through creating the greatest products in the world. Uh, and we try to give people tools that make them do things or allow them to do things that they could otherwise do. And so that's sort of the thread that ties us all together. Uh, and it's the best place in all the world. Why? Because, because of the feeling, the feeling that you get when you're making a difference. It's, um, it's better than any paycheck, it's better than anything you could ever uh, get out of a job. And this feeling that you're truly making a difference in the world. And uh, I, I've never felt it before entering the Apple door. And after you get that feeling, you become incredibly uh, selfish. You never want to give it up because you know how special it is. And I've never, I've never really encountered it in other places. And uh, so I, I hold it dear. A different mindset, a different attitude about products, a different ethos about perfection. It's a bar of excellence that merely good isn't good enough. It has to be great. As Steve used to say, insanely great. Uh, it's that it not only has to be great, but it has to make a difference with people. It has to enrich somebody's life. Uh, and, and so you get the combination of these feelings coming together. And I don't know, it's, it's just, you feel like a kid again. And uh, there, there feels like there is nothing impossible, that, that you can do anything. You believe you can do things other companies can't do. You do, you do, we all do. And we have, fortunately. Uh, and you do it to benefit other people. And so it's not a thing about, you know, revenues and profits. Those are, those are outcomes and results of doing things right. They're not the purpose. They're not the North Star. And, uh, and so I, I, I will, I don't think this thing is replicatable. And so we hold it, we hold it very dear. Is the DNA of Steve Jobs baked deeply into everything you just said? It is, it is. This, uh, this is Steve's company. This is still Steve's company. Uh, it was born that way, it's still that way. And uh, so his spirit, I think, will always be the DNA of this company. Uh, that doesn't mean that it doesn't change and morph with the times and, and so forth, but the, the, the underpinnings of excellence, of creating great products, uh, this will always be the, the, the foundation of this company. Is it because you have control over hardware and software? That's a key element. That's why we can innovate like no one else is because we have control over hardware, software, and services. And we found that the real magic happens when these things come together. And very few, really, I'm not sure any other company has that. Most, most people uh, subscribe to the really specializing in one of those. We found that, that pr to produce a great customer experience, you have to do all three. You have to do all three to make them seamless. And, and that's what we do. Someone said, Samsung has the hardware, not the software. Google has the software and not the hardware. Yeah, I, think that's a, I think that's a fair assessment. I think both companies have tried to do the other and found it's not so easy. Uh, and we, fortunately, we have decades of doing both and really get deeply the power of both. You know, but we also know that you can only do it really great on a few things. And so the other part of our model is to focus. And you know, you can put every product we've got here around us right now, and despite our revenues being over $200 billion. And, and I think, you know, that's a, 
we would not be able to be really great if we had to do many, many different, different products. Yeah. We couldn't do that. And we know we couldn't do it, and so we don't even try. If you're so good, and there's so much money in the world, why can't people come here and steal your best? You know, because you can't steal culture. You can't steal that, just like you can't replicate it. If it were replicatable, there's, like, there's so much money in the world in different parts. Uh, people that have tried to copy our products, they would first try to copy the culture that produces the products. But it's not so simple. You can't tell people that uh, to all of a sudden magically want to change the world. You can't tell people how to feel. You can't instill passion. Uh, these things develop out of a culture that's sort of self-sustaining in some ways. And we're very fortunate to have that. But you're making products. How is that changing the world? Because you're you're giving you're phones and iPads. But look look what this phone did. This phone created an app ecosystem that now has one and a half million apps in it. And you can do literally everything with these apps. They can improve your health. They can improve others' health. They can improve your learning. They can help a kid learn who has autism. Um, they can help you write music. They can help you create art. They do things that are that give you the tool to do things that you would not otherwise be able to do. Just think about your day and what you've been able to do because that ecosystem exists and because that product exists. I, I, I don't know about you, but I look at my life and I can't imagine it without these things. But see, I don't understand why somebody can't duplicate this. Yes, you have good people. Yes, you have uh, great people. Great people. And yes, you have a passion for perfection. But all the people who believe in that are not here in Cupertino. Yeah, I gotta be. I mean, it astounds me that there's Apple is unchallenged. Businesses get in the way of themselves, and so they, they begin to um, to create organizations that have their own objectives, and then they begin to create conflict between these organizations, and they fight each other. They begin to become focused on each other instead of on customers and competition. We don't really do that. We have very few objectives for the company. We have very few problems. We all or in the same direction. We all or in the in the direction of great products. This is what we rotate the company around. And so it, it becomes we do complex things, we we uh, but we have a very short list and it makes it it makes it work with us. So you see ideas that maybe you could turn into good products, but you say no. Yeah, and saying no is always the hardest thing. It's because you, you, you go through your life and uh, every day, all day long, all of us can say, well, oh, this is so crazy, we'd like to do work on this, we'd like to work on that. We could come up with an infinite list, literally, of things to work on. But we know we can't do them all great. And so we shorten the list a lot. How do you decide which ones you do? There's no formula. There's no formula. It's arguing, it's debating, it's figuring out what things that we can do better than other people. If there are other people that can do them as good, we're not interested in going into that. We want to be somewhere where we can do something that's truly great and truly different. So nobody in the world can make an Apple watch the way Apple can make an Apple watch. I think you can look at the market and see that that's true. I mean, to take if a they look. Have, they would have stepped forward. Of course, of course, they would have already been on the market, but it, but it wasn't. There were smart watches on the market, just like there were smartphones in the market before iPhone and tablets on the market before iPad. But, but arguably, we had the first modern one of each of those. Let me go back to Steve for a second. Right. I mean, what does he contribute today? What does the legacy of Steve Jobs mean in the day-to-day -day activities? Most of the things I just talked about originate from Steve. The idea of focusing on few things. The idea that, that excellence is an incredibly high bar. The focus on building great products, insanely great products. The idea that we should have a functional-based organization and not a division like most corporations do. 
All of these things were things that link back to Okay, but he's not the only perfectionist in the world. No. He never was. <laughs> no. I know true. a lot of people insane about perfection. Yeah. Are you saying the only one who's insane about perfection is Bob's? 